FMU, you're on the air. Hi, is this Tom? It is. Hey, Tom, this is Ben Dublin. I'm the head of PR for the Romney Ryan campaign. Who's this? Ben Dublin. Ben Dublin. Yes, yeah. How are you tonight, Ben? Doing okay. Um, and you said you work for the Romney campaign? Yeah, yeah, head of PR. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to, good to be here. Listen, um, as you probably know, we're a little behind in the, in the polls. Yes. And we really need to make up some ground here quickly. Mm. Okay. Um, especially with the younger voters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Mr. Romney's having a bit of a hard time connecting with some of the youngsters. It's it, yeah. It seems like there's definitely a, a, a that's where the the shift is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I wanted to get your opinion on a few things. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, honestly, off the record, I'm 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 I'm, I'm having a tough time with this. Um, you see, Mitt put me in charge of what he calls Youth Vote Capture 2012. Youth vote capture 2012. Yeah, he, lo- he loves these terms that, that sound like military maneuvers. Uh-huh. Yeah, like the other night in Chicago, he wanted me to get him a, a pizza, and, and he called this whole thing Operation Deep Dish. <laughs> Operation Deep Dish. Yeah, he even had jacket patches made up for it. They're round. Guess what they're in the shape of? Uh, pizza. That's right, yeah. 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 So that was his idea? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, look, um, we have very few people under the age of 40 in the upper echelons of this campaign. Okay. Yeah, all you mean, the cool people want to work for Obama. Uh-huh. You mean running, like working behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, doing the computer stuff, you know, website, pretty much everything. It's, it, it, it's an older, you know, it's, it's an older staff, I, I, I got to admit. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't really understand why the young people want to vote for uh, or want to work for Obama. Um, you know, he's a Muslim, right? What's that? He's a Muslim. No, he, no, that's that is like the most disproven thing you can say about Obama. He's, he's not. I know. Oh, you know. I was just throwing it out there. I want to see if you would run with it. Kind of, yeah. Well, no, that's Ugh. horrible. I'm sorry. So it's Look, all. I'm at a real disadvantage here. Mm-hmm. I'm 58 years old. Okay. The last rock concert I went to was Vanilla Fudge and Blue Oysters Cult in 1973. B- vanilla fudge and blue yeah. oysters blue oyster cult what's it called it's i think you said blue oysters blue oysters cult no yeah. it, it's one oyster blue oyster no, there, cult. there are like five of them yeah no but the, but it's the band name is blue oyster cult oh okay well I- irregardless i i hated the entire night mm-hmm. you know, all those dungaree jackets and sneakers uh-huh Oof. turned you off not into it. So you can imagine how hard this is for me to, you know, to kind of spearhead a youth campaign. Sure. It's, it's, this is not your... Uh... Not, not, not my bag, really. You know? Yeah. So my goal here is to get some cool, hip musicians on board the Romney train. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll tell you, I've been uh, on the computer all day looking at these websites. Mm-hmm. Trying to see, you know, who 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 I should pursue, and um, you know, I was looking at this thing called Vice dot com, um, okay. hipster runoff. Sounds like a Russian hipster runoff. A runoff. Yeah. What is it? I, I don't even get it. Uh, Brooklyn Vegan. Uh huh. And Shovel dot com. Uh huh. Yeah. Listen, do, do you think uh, any of these bands would be willing to play a, a Romney rally? Okay, like who? Wives. Nurses. Uh, frames, women, chairs, uh, sheets, or tropics. First of all, let me say, is that what rock band names are like now? It is. That's actually what they're they're all like. Yes, I, I da- those bands. I I would be shocked if any of them were in in the Romney camp. Okay. What about this band? Um, the Mountain Goats. Uh, says here that their new album, uh, Transcendental Youth, um, came out today on Marge Records? Merge Records. Merge Records, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks like uh, Pitchfork dropped it right in the zone. The zone? What is yeah. What's the zone? 7.8, it reads like 8.3. Okay. Anyway, I'm working on some cool slogans for, for mm-hmm. T-shirts also for the campaign. You okay. Know, to, get, to get the young people wearing. Yeah. Like what? What kind of stuff? You ready? Yeah. Romney, 
the original hipster. The, I don't know what that, the original hipster. Yeah. Think about it. Mitt Romney, the original hipster. Yeah, think about it. I'm, th- I'm thinking about it. I don't, I can't make the connection at all. I don't get it. Well, he's the ultimate hipster, right? H- how? I, I don't see it. I don't either. I, I, I just thought it sounded cool. It's cool, isn't it? The ori- I was hoping you would just run with it, actually. The, Mitt Romney, the original hipster. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, how about this? Obama, what eaves? What's that? What? Obama, question mark, yeah. what eaves? What eaves? Yeah. What, what is what eaves? Well, it's something I saw written somewhere where young people congregate. Yeah. What evs? What's that? It's like an abbreviation of whatever. Spell it. W-H-A-T. I got that. E-V-S. Oh, I have E-V-E-S. That kind of changes it. Yes. Oh, yeah. geez. I don't have to tell you, Ben. Well, I actually already printed up um, 500,000 of each of those shirts. So 500,000 shirts that say Romney, the original hipster. In every size. Uh-huh. Including triple XL. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, oh, man. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. That That's a bit of a misfire. It's tough stuff. Yeah. Ugh. You know what's even harder? What's that? Well, besides the young vote, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to do what I can to deliver Romney the, um, the uptown vote. What, what is the uptown vote? Oh, you don't know what that is? Uh, moving on. No, no. Um, wait, what, no what, what are you calling? You definitely no, seem to know what you're... What, it, it seems to be something you know about. What is the uptown vote? Come on. Let's talk about something else. No. What, what did you mean? All right. Well, you know, there's the, there's the uptown vote, and then there's the downtown vote. You know, the, the uptown vote is where all the okay all the cool MFs are. You know, the, you know, the people who know what it is. That is... That, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's the horrible. So that's like a totally racist thing it's you're doing. It's not. Sure I'll it tell is. you one thing, though. What? We had a very hard time getting an after for, for these uptown spots that we're about to run. For up... Uh, please stop saying uptown. Okay, well... So These you, spots that we're about to run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not proud of this, but we tricked Marlon Jackson into doing them. Mar Marlon Jackson? You mean from the Jacksons? Yeah. Uh, how, so you tricked him into doing a Romney spot? Yeah. We how, told him it was a commercial for a, a company called Romney Furniture. Furniture. Yeah. So he thought he was doing like a TV commercial for a yeah. furniture company? Yeah. We had him loop his lines and then we dumped it all into Pro Tools and we did some punch ins and we you know, chopped it up and voila, another cool celeb repping for Mitt. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'll tell you, put Obama's top five celebs against our top five and you can't tell the difference. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, like, who, who do they have? They have like. Uh, like, like Clooney, George Clooney, yeah. Um, Baldwin, A- Alec Baldwin, Jay Z, uh-huh. uh, Jay Z, sure. Uh, Chris Rock, mm-hmm. uh, Barbara Streisand, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty strong. Eh, it's okay. Well, who who would be the equivalent on the Republican side? Uh, ever heard of Clint Eastwood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about John Voight? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Ted Nugent. Okay, that's three. Uh, Jack Blades. Jack Blades. Yeah. He's he, he in a rock group called Night Rangers. The guy, so the guy, so you're already pulling up the guy from Night Ranger as your fourth biggest celebrity. Well, uh, how about that? Oh, all right. You ready for this? Yeah. Chuck Woolery. <laughs> Chuck, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm in a little bit of a thing with Chuck Woolery now. Oh. So. Yeah. Really? Do tell. Well, I, he's. Is he schooling you? No, we had a little bit of a Twitter uh, back and forth. Uh, what's Twitter? <laughs> what's Twitter? Yeah, you're part of this youth movement. Yeah, hang on. Let me get my let me get my pencil. Uh huh. What is it? It well, it's a uh, it's like a social media su- what's a website. That? <sighs> oh boy. Yeah, this is Ben. You are. This is uh, this is a. Uh, well, we also have this guy named Harley Flanagan on board. Uh huh. Yeah. And that is the guy from, uh, 
What's he from? The Cro Mags? Uh, it's a rock group, I think. Is it a rock group or a movie called it's the Cro Mags? It's a rock group. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's on board. Yeah. And you're gonna... oh, you don't think these people are cool enough? No. Well, I think it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, uh, motley crew you've got there. I wish I could get Motley Crew. Uh huh. That's a movie, right? No, that's a band also. Ugh. These wow. hip people. I, I, I had some pretty bad experiences with with a few of my. I thought I thought a few of these people would be good good fits for the Romney campaign. A few of the celebs you've talked yeah. about. Yeah. Like what what kind of uh, bad fits are you having? Oh, I thought Sean Penn would would do it. Sean Penn. Yeah, I thought he'd be a Romney man. Are you? He's yeah. always playing a tough guy. Yeah, but he's a, he's. A, you never heard him talk about stuff. He's like as no. left as it gets. Okay. How about this woman? B once. B one. Beyonce. Oh. B once. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This is, you are. He out wasn't of... into it either. It, uh, well, here was a big surprise. This this this, this cat Michael Moore. Uh huh. And I thought he'd be into in the mid. My... Like a nice Midwestern guy. He wears uh, a baseball cap. Uh huh. Big shirts. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Big shirts. Yeah. You thought so? You're. You really don't have a whole lot of. Uh, uh, I told you this is hard. Yeah, you're 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 starting from scratch. I am. I'm I'm really whooped today too, Tom. Uh huh. Yeah, today was tough. What what happened today? Well, I was getting pulled in every direction possible, you know, by the by the you know the real by the team, you know, mm -hmm. by Mitt and Ann and 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 Paul and Gene. Mm hmm. Well, who who is Gene? Gene. Well, well Mitt, Mitt and Ann. That's Mitt Romney and Ann Romney. You said Paul. That's Paul Ryan. Yeah. The VP. Yep. But then you said, "Who's Gene?" Uh, Gene is Mr. Romney's jeans. Wait, you lo you lost me there for a second. It's what what is it? who is it? Mr. Romney's jeans. He calls them Gene. His jeans. Yeah, yeah. He's very proud of them. He, he calls them the presidential dungarees. Have you seen them? I've seen the jeans that he does wear. Yeah. It's funny. The the young people, they've been calling them mommy jeans, uh -huh. which I just don't get because he's a father, not a mommy. Yeah, well, they're not they're not the coolest jeans. What's not cool about them? I, I think the way they're cut and the color of them. Okay. Uh-huh. You yeah. know, Mitt wants his jeans to really catch on. Uh-huh. And he wants them to kind of be like his jelly beans, you know, like, like, like Reagan had or his peanuts like Carter had. Yeah. Yeah. He actually talks to them. He, talk, he talks to the Jeans. Yeah, he makes large bets with Gene on football games. Uh huh. Yeah, he'll bet he'll bet Gene like twenty thousand dollars that a team won't get a first down on the next play. Uh huh. And and he has he has meetings with Gene also. Well, what kind of meetings? Well, it's like, what do you think about that, Gene? You know, what do you think about the uh, the economy, Gene? What should I do? And then he'll wait for Gene to, to to respond. And of course, there there isn't a response, but that doesn't seem to phase. Mitt, he just kind of stands there with this, you know, this frozen facial expression. You know, but he will do the um, every now and then. Mitt will do a handstand mm -hmm. so people can see his jeans. Uh huh. Like in mid sentence, he'll do, he'll just he'll just plop down and do a handstand, and so everyone's kind of just sitting there looking at Mitt's pant lump. What? Ugh. You know. Yeah. That's rough. But like I said, it's odd. He'll, you know, he'll do something like that, and then he'll just kind of. Stand there with this non-expression on his face. It's 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 kind of weird, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll watch him sometimes, and I'm thinking, is is this a human? Uh huh. Yeah, and then I'll be honest. After a lot of thinking about it, yeah, I still can't really say for sure that he's human. Yeah, yeah. Like we'll go out for these meet and greets at restaurants and things, mm -hmm. you know. And and it's almost like that movie Starman. Do you remember that movie? Kind of. Je Jeff Daniels, I think it was, uh -huh. and, you know, he, or uh, and he he, he um, you know, he doesn't really know what stuff is. He's he's yeah. trying to pass as human. Yeah. And he goes into a diner, and you know, he just it's very mechanical, and the way he asks for things, and uh -huh. yeah, um, Mitt's kind of like that. He's not really sure what things are. What What do you mean he's not sure what things are? Well, like that Chick Fil A photo today. Did you see that? No, I did not. There was a photo taken. He went in, into a Chick Fil A, and he had like a, you know, like a, like a press, uh, like a photo op, and it's him standing with these three Chick Fil A employees, and you know, he looks very uncomfortable, and and uh, you know, thankfully that 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 was the 
that was all that got out there, you know, because I clearly heard him ask at one point, so this is that fast food, huh? That's what he said about it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody heard him except me, thank, thankfully. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, people you know, they'll joke about him being a distant robot. Yeah. But he, he does kind of have that, you know, and it's kind of my job to make sure that, you know, he comes off better, you know, and I, I, I do want to say that he, he does care about people. He just doesn't have a, a, a nice way of showing empathy. You know, I, I actually saw him stab himself in the hand the other day at a hospital when he was visiting these injured minors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why? I told, why? Uh, well, I, I told him that he wasn't appearing sympathetic enough. Yeah. You know, so he very stealthily pulled out a little um, pen knife and stabbed himself in the hand so he'd look upset. Because of the pain he was feeling. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, if he needs to cry, yeah, he'll very nonchalantly put his hand in front of his eyes yeah. like he's about to sneeze or something. Yeah. And he actually has a very small onion in there that, that uh, makes him tear up. In his hands? Yes, yeah. How small is the onion? It's like a Vidalia. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it, 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 it packs a punch. It's actually, you know, g- genetically altered. So he... Yeah, current Pharmaceuticals is, is making those for uh-huh. Oh, great. Yeah. So he holds a little genetically modified Vidalia-sized onion yeah. in his hands that mm-hmm. he puts in front of his face to make himself cry. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, as I said, it, it isn't that he doesn't care. It's just that he... Somewhere the, the emotion gets lost between his heart and his face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of like Barry Bonds or you know, Bob Dylan or, or the Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Like people who just, it, they, they, there's a huge disconnect there. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Hey, did, did you know that Mitt loves Weetabix? You know what that is? I, you know, it's stuff my, that's like my grandmother ate Weetabix. Yeah. yeah. It's like a really bland, right? It's like, exactly, like a breakfast cereal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so he's a big Weetabix eater. Loves it to the point of, I have to talk him out of having Weetabix as the main course at these four thousand dollar a plate dinners he wants to have weedabix yep he thinks it's fun food that that's fun yeah yeah oh geez that reminds me weedabix wow i have to get a hold of uh mitt's ipod and put some actual music on it before um this newsweek thing Uh uh-huh yeah well what, what do you mean put actual music on it well there's not any music on it right now but is there what well what is on it Chewing. What, what, what do you mean by what chewing is on it? Well, um, what, what do you mean by chewing? I'll best to say this. Mitt, uh, he likes to listen to the sound of himself eating. I, I don't uh, know how, what that means. Well, his assistant, Dell, has to record Mitt eating breakfast every morning, and then he has to turn it into an MP3 file and then dump it onto Mitt's iPod for him to listen to throughout the day. Mitt calls it his chew mixes. That's weird. Yeah. He gets some weird strength from it. It's, it I, I don't quite get it. And I, uh, Anne does it too, honestly. Of listening to himself eating. No, she, her, her mixes are of herself whistling. Okay. Yeah. And he listens to himself... Chewing. Chewing a previous meal. Yeah, yeah. And it gets them pumped up? It does. It's, it's kind of weird. But I'll tell you, the eating sounds are better than what was on the iPod up until very recently. What, what was on it? Rhodes Bladder 74. What, what's that? Rhodes Bladder 74. What, what is Rhodes Bladder 74? Well, you know the Osmonds, right? Sure. Well, back, back in 74, uh-huh. they did this album that was inspired by those Driver Ed films they'd show at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, those ones that were really awful. They had, like, gross footage of car accidents and things. Very, very frightening stuff for, for kids. Yeah, yeah, trying to just uh, keep them from, like, drinking and driving exactly. or speeding. Yeah, yeah. Well, Donnie and the boys recorded this album that was inspired by those films, and they actually recorded while they watched the films, and they even used a lot of the sound effects from those films on, on, on the album. You know, sirens, people screaming, the sounds of heads being crushed. Really sick stuff. This is an Osmonds album? It, yes, and about a month after the album came out, they realized that kids were listening to it for the wrong reasons. 
kids were smoking pot and listening to this thing like it was a horror movie. Uh huh. And the Osmonds were not into that at all, so they but, pulled the LP from the shelves. So is the record all of those sounds and stuff, and they're singing along yeah. with it? Sing like rock songs, but but the songs are scary too. It's almost like that. Uh, what was that song? Um, oh, it was about a car accident from like the fifties or sixties. I forget what it was called. I'll, I'll think of it. The leader of the pack. It, it was like a more disturbing one than that about, like, a car accident. I don't know. Very gross. Uh -huh. Anyway, the Osmonds pulled the LP, but Mitt has a copy of it somehow, and, and he still loves it. And it's such a sick record, and you'd, you'd look over, and he'd have his, his earbuds on just l listening to it while just kind of sitting there with a blank non-expression on his face. Uh-huh. Very disturbing. Yeah. Well, this record sounds insane. It is insane, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Hey, speaking of horror movies... Yeah, yeah? Oh, man. I just remembered this. I need to res uh, reschedule tomorrow's screening. Of what? Well, you do know that Mitt's first name is actually Willard, right? Yes, it's Willard. Yeah. Sure. Well, the only film that Mitt likes, and possibly the only film he's ever seen, is Willard. It might be the only film he's ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the film Willard? It's like with the kid with the rats. Yes, yeah, he has two. He, he he has no friends except for these rats, and of course the rats, you know, end up going on a on a rampage or a, a, a rat page. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So well, he, anyway, Mitt has daily screenings of uh, of Willard, and he, he likes it to be kind of like a Rocky Horror thing where people act it out. Uh huh. Yeah, he used to make his sons play the rats, but now he makes his grandkids do it. That's weird. so they play the rats. Yeah. In his little, like he does these, like he's staging it where, like just like wherever, throw up a screen and and uh, wherever, like he he was watching it right before he went on stage at the at the at the convention. He was watching his grandkids do a reenactment yeah. of Willard. Oh yeah, but he gets in, he gets in on it too. Every now and then, he Mitt will turn out the lights and he'll get down on his hands and knees and start biting people's ankles, oh. making these squeaky noises like. <laughs> Oh, Very scary. He calls it going into rat mode. He bites really hard too. That's that's the most terrifying thing I've ever it's, pictured. It's it's it, it's terrifying. It it really oh. is. And uh, I really don't like it. And he knows it too. And he knows it gives me the willies. But he still he'll he'll surprise me every now and then. And rat I really don't mode. Like it. He goes into rat mode. Rat mode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. God. <sighs> That's horrifying. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, you have uh, you have some TV experience. That's what I've heard. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Maybe give me some pointers here. You know, um, I got a very big meeting tomorrow. Uh huh. With FX. Sure, the channel FX. Yeah, it's a very crucial meeting. Uh huh. Well, what what is the meeting about? Well, I'm pitching them some new characters for the next few episodes of their show, Sons of Anarchy. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, who are you pitching them? Well, let's just say a new gang rolls into Charming. Yeah? And they're called the Gops. The Gops? Yeah. Uh-huh. G-O-P-S. Sure, okay. Yeah. I think I see where this is going. Okay, well, the characters' names are Glove. Glove. Push-ups. Okay. Whitey and Blackie. P Glove? Who's playing Glove? Well, that's... This is, this is, this is going to blow your mind. The characters are played by... Mitt Romney, he's he, he's glove. Uh huh. Push ups. That's that's Paul Ryan. Yeah. And you probably think Whitey is uh, is someone like Newt Gingrich, right? I I don't know. You tell me. Oh. All right. <laughs> I'll build a little on this. Newt Gingrich and Herman Cain are the other two people. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of so. No. See. What. You 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 went to a conclusion you didn't need to go to, which was what? Well, you thought that Whitey was going to be uh, was going to be nude, right? I, I had no idea. And Blackie was going to be came. Well, that's horrible. Well, it's not that way. Uh huh. You racist pig. Uh huh. Yeah. It's so, the other way around. So Herman Cain plays Whitey. Yeah. On Sons of Anarchy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Newt Gingrich plays Blackie. Well, that's exactly yeah. It's still gross. Hey, it's just that. That's that's it, called a TV tweak, you jerk. 
A TV tweak. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what a TV tweak is? I don't know what a TV tweak is. Well, here's an example. Like, um, remember All in the Family? Sure. If you recall, Rob Reiner's character was called Meathead. Yes. But he never, in the, I, I think in the entire history of the show, ever had any meat on his head. Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, it's a TV tweak. A t- Going against it. Yeah, yeah. Well, going against what you think it is. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, speaking of All in the Family, do you remember the final episode of Archie Bunker's Place? You know, I've talked about this on the show previously. I yeah. did not remember it when it aired. Yeah. But it, it apparently was like a legendary... Yeah, he got sent to the electric chair. Yeah. That's really... Uh, it's, it's a gruesome... It's like a, it's like a, a, a just a, a landmark in TV history. Yeah, yeah. That, they actually showed some of it the other night on the History Channel's Entertainment's Most Disturbing Things. Uh huh. Yeah, it was right in between Trenell Strauss's film The Tool Belt Killer and the Kiss song Room Service. <laughs> they showed the part of the finale of Archie Bunker's Place where he gets zapped. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, where Archie's convicted for the death of like a club owner. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, gets. I think, uh, yeah, Crystal Mountains or something? Yeah, and he yeah. gets sent to uh, the electric chair. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I don't remember that at the time, but it's, uh, I, I don't watch a lot of those shows, the, uh, those those kind of like the best of this or ten worst oh, of that. Okay. So, hey, yeah? I, I have a couple things to run by you. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm writing some Romney zingers for the debate tomorrow night. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, you're actually, he's entrusting you with that. Oh, it's all hands on deck. We're all doing it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh so everybody's taking a crack at, at these. Yeah, even down to the janitor, Jose. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right, here, here you go. You ready? Oh, sure. Oh, you're going to run it by me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. President, you've made so many promises that you didn't keep. You're like the owner of a BMW dealership who promises that you'll have the 2013 M5 sedan in Singapore gray metallic, but then you try to make me buy a 2012 model instead. <laughs> so that, Why are you laughing? Because it's, yeah, that's a, that one's a little, that's a little out of touch. Oh, how about this one? Uh-huh. Mr. President, if I had $1,000 for every lie you've told... I'd be able to buy a seventh yacht. <laughs> a seventh? It's going to sting. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, again, these are really, they're, they're, they're very clueless. Look. What? I know that on some level you're laughing at me for this, and you just think it's ridiculous what I'm doing. Because, I mean, these things are, it's, like, it's, very, it's very out of touch. Well, you think I'm trying to... Make Mr. Romney cool to people who are never going to buy him as that. I I know, you know, but I'm I'm doing it for a very specific reason. Okay. Okay. Well, what's the reason? Look, Mr. Romney's a good man. I'm serious, you know. I know it doesn't come across sometimes, but he's got a huge heart. He listens and he cares, and that that's the man I want to see in the White House. He's a man with a core set of beliefs that sometimes make him seem unrelatable, sure. But those are beliefs that make him truly great, okay? Those beliefs have sustained him through some very difficult times, and it's what allowed him to make difficult decisions. Decisions that sometimes might contain some hard truths. The kind of stuff that some politicians are afraid of. But Mitt's not that kind of guy. He's not gonna sugarcoat things just for a vote. He knows how great America is and how much greater it can become. And I, for one, will be proud to vote for him this November. Wow. Wow, that, that's, that's, that's really, that, that's, it's really effective what you said. That's, man, because, yeah, I, I mean, look, I thought I was like a firm Obama voter but what you know the way you just said that it's like i'm i see him the way you see him that you know that that and that counts for something wow i i got something to think about oh hang on sorry hang on. 
What's that? Hello? Yes, hi, Governor Christie. Yes, yes. Listen, I will be out of this nightmare by 8 a.m. November 7th, okay? All I have to do is disassemble my cubicle in the Romney campaign office and then shred every document tying me to this doomed campaign. And then, of course, the last order of business I, I have to take care of is the coordinating of that airlift of all these Romney Ryan victory shirts that are going to end up in Uganda. Yeah, no one's going to see this. No one from America is ever going to see that stuff there. I'm ch- no, I will. I'll be there. You sound mad, sir. Please don't yell at me. Please, please. Well, it feels like you're very angry. Sir, please stop yelling at me. Listen, sir, I think it's time for a Bruce break. Is your working on a dream CD nearby? Okay. Put on Outlaw Pete. I know that always calms you down and puts you in your calm place. Yes, I'll wait. God. Yes, that's better, isn't it? Ooh. Yes, Governor. Let the rage out, okay? Yes. Yes. It feels good. Oh. <laughs> He's asleep. He's asleep. Wait. Ben? Excuse me? Yes. Who are, who are you just talking to? Uh, Governor Christie. Chris... Yeah, that sounded like Chris Christie. Yeah. And, but you... He gets, he gets so mad that, he, that he'll get in these rages, but then he'll fall asleep right at the end of them. At the and end I'll of tell the... you that uh, the Bruce breaks really help, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Bruce breaks. Yeah. Now, you, you, after you just made this kind of impassioned plea, mm-hmm. you, you just said that the – I heard what you were saying. Oh, you did? Yeah. What would you hear? I, everything. Uh-oh. You're going to – you're going to airlift the shirts out or airdrop them out? Um, what else did you hear? I heard you say it was a doomed campaign. Oh, no. This does not go between us, okay? Oh, you're on the radio. <gasps> what? No, I'm not. Yes. Oh, my God. No, I'm not. Of course you are. Oh, no. Where, where did oh, no, you... What was that? What's that? The lights just went out. The the lights went out. Oh my god! Oh, it's me! Oh my god! He's in rat mode! No! Ben? Ben! 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 He's gone. He's gone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was intense. <laughs>